welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here hello my name is Nika thank you so much for stopping in heart to heart stop judging the person and listen to the message a lot of times we feel like if a person is not doing what they're trying to preach to us we don't want to hear it especially when it comes to relationships marriages friendships parenting um, if someone's giving advice on something, but they admit like, hey, I've never done this or um, my children are grown now or my children may even live with the other parent now. We look at it, them as failures. We're like, why would, why would I listen to you and you don't even have your kids anymore? Your kids are grown. So the times have changed since your kids were young or you've been divorced now for a couple of years. You couldn't even make that marriage work. And you said you've already been married for less than five years. Um, you said that, you know, you've been in multiple relationships and none of them are working. You've never gotten married. Why would I listen to you? You don't know what you're talking about. If I listen to you, you're going to lead me down the wrong path. We tend to do that because it makes sense to us logically. Like if someone is able to do something and it actually works out for them, like, let's like say, for example, the whole relationship thing. If someone's able to get into a relationship that relationship works and they make it to marriage and then they be married for 10, 15, 20 years and they're still afloat. They're still holding up in their marriage. Things still seem to be good. They're able to uh, communicate and able to understand each other, compromise, whatever they have to do to keep the relationship going. Those are the people we want to look at and say, yes, I admire you and I'm going to trust you because you, you must have the secret sauce. You got it going on. You got something that is working for you. You have not failed. So I would rather listen to the winner versus the loser. So I don't want to hear nothing that nobody who has failed at anything that I'm trying to do in life. I don't want to hear nothing they have to say. Well, I am opposite. I want to hear the people who have failed at something. And the reason why is because for one, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. You don't know. So they can be saying, you know what, my my marriage is so good, I'm happy. And they can be getting beat, they can be getting cheated on, they can be getting, you know, mistreated, taken for granted, you know, not appreciated, not shown the love that you're looking for and you're desiring, but you're making up this, this perfect story in your mind because of what you see, what you see on social media, what you hear them saying in that moment. Of course, a lot of people, a lot of women, especially if we're in an unhealthy marriage, we're not going to tell you until it's over because we don't want to look stupid. So think about if that person's been in the marriage for a while and they're, they're trying to tell people about how to be married, how to stay married and all this stuff. They're going to just highlight the good stuff. They're not going to say, oh, you got to put up with maybe if he get mad, he may block your eye. Um, if he get mad, you know, maybe he may go out and go find him another woman for a little bit of time. But you just, you, you'll get over it after the few tears and stuff you cry. You'll be okay eventually. Or, you know, if she feels like she's not happy with you she'll go find somebody else and she'll go do her thing but she'll come back to you or she'll go she had a baby on me while we were married um but it's fine we got past that i forgave her and no, no one knows that our child is not really our child it's because she cheated she had an outside baby but i love her so much i i decided to stay no one's going to tell you that no one's going to say these are the possibilities these are the risks until they are out of that relationship until they face divorce those are the people i want to listen to because you give me the pros and the cons and you're going to give it to me more raw sometimes people do project onto you and they'll say things you know like don't ever trust men don't trust women don't don't get married and all this kind of stuff because they've been so scarred and hurt and before they go and get the, the work that they need to get done as far as therapy and really surrendering to God and getting that help um, to renew themselves to you know to get through that pain work through that pain so then they can you know become newer versions of themselves because they don't have that and they haven't done the work they come to you on a platform projecting and telling you all the scary things on why you should not get married, why you should not worry about having kids or having a family or whatever, because they themselves have not healed from something. And so, you know, you have to be, you have to be logical. You know, if someone's projecting, 
be cautious of that. I'm not saying just because they've gone through something and they failed at it that you should be listening to everything that they're saying because some people, like I said, are just unhealed and so they project. Once they come to the acceptance and they've been through therapy, I like to listen to people who are who speak on therapy who are not ashamed to say, yes, I went through therapy. Even men, they say, you know, they went through a period of, of um, therapy and abstinence and things like that. I like listening to them because that shows me that they care about their healing and that they care about learning the lesson that they needed to learn. They didn't just bed hop, they didn't relationship hop. They didn't, you know, try to sweep everything under the rug. They actually say, you know, I took this time for myself because I know that that's what I needed to do. So those are people that I tend to listen to because they have wisdom. And don't you want the wisdom? Um, we're too busy judging and, and saying, oh, I went to this person because they, they feel that this, they felt like that. But those are the people to get the best information from. If you really listen to what they're saying, they're telling you. I didn't pass this test because of this. I, I feel that this, this relationship failed because of that. And they're willing to take accountability. I listen to people like that too who take accountability because they you always play a part in your failures and your wins. It just doesn't feel good to, to say that you, you played a part in your failures, but it's true, you have. So I, I like to listen to people who, who can be real and raw on both sides. And there's no, you know, backing down from it. It's okay, yeah, I did do this. And yes, I did feel like that. But this is how I, I made it through. And this is what I'm doing now. This is what I'm doing differently. Because you never know. Just because a person is homeless. At one point in time, they probably did have a home. They probably did have a great job. But maybe they was in a bad relationship where, where they ended up losing everything. Or they just had bad spending habits. And they lived above their means. And then it just got to a point where they just couldn't keep up anymore. Maybe they, they, they haven't lost their kids. Maybe they just decided to give the kids to the other parent. Because they were not in a good space. And they're telling you, like, this is why. This is why I had to let this go. Because I didn't work on myself because I didn't love myself. I had to step back from being a parent and let the other parent parent. If they they felt up in a relationship, I didn't get married because of my fears. That's a part of my story too. If you guys look through my videos, you'll hear me say, I, I have a lot of fear and that bled into my relationships. And so the relationships where I was able to get married or people wanted to marry me, I completely ruined it. I mean, I, I do believe that what's for you is for you. So those relationships obviously wasn't the ones for me. But I can say that that experience, I can definitely share that on a way that I just kept on, you know, blocking. If someone was trying to love me, I was putting up a wall. I was making it difficult for them to love me. And that caused me to lose my relationships. And... You know, as far as, you know, being married, yes, I haven't been married, but I've been in a relationship before 10 years straight, constant, no breakup, 10 year, full long, living together, living like married couple, 10 years, no break, not off and on, nothing, 10 years hustling, um, compromising, supporting, loving, figuring things out, lots of conversations. And then at the end of our relationship, that's when I matured more. And I was like, you know what? The problem is the disconnect. Is I'm loving you the way that I want to love you. You're loving me the way that you want to love me. And that's it. It's not us really figuring out where we are right now in our lives and what we need to feel loved and appreciated. And so I introduce weekly conversations, weekly, like, like we have a small date, whether it's at home or outside. But during that date day, either on that date or during that day, we would have to talk about where we are. And it didn't have to be a long conversation. It could have been a quick 10 minute conversation of this is this is what's going well and this is what's not. And I would like for to implement, you know, this or I would like for changes to be made here and whatever. And we would have those conversations and things did, that did help me a lot. That helped both of us a lot because we both felt heard, appreciated, and it helped us to better learn how to give to each other in a manner where we could actually keep the relationship going but by that time that was close to the end of our relationship probably in year seven and a half eight it was already so much damage done from the prior years that even though that was a great tool to add to the relationship and it was working it failed so yeah i have a lot of wisdom to give i and i can tell you advice like that just because i'm single right now just because that relationship did not work just because we did not get married that does not mean that I don't have things to offer you in my experience, in my, in my life. We have to get past looking at what a person has or what they look like physically 
or what they have going on in their life in the moment and be willing to listen. You know how to use discernment. Just tap into that. Pray about it. Say, God, you know what? This person shared this story with me. Show me what I should listen to in this. Show me if this message is for me. You know, help me to take from it what I need and leave the rest. That's all I'm saying. We need to stop being so quick to judge people. You need to know. You need to know how that happened. If people are willing to share with you, listen. That's all I'm saying. But y'all let me know what you think. Leave your comments in the comment box below. As usual, please be respectful and courteous and kind because someone like myself is reading your messages and you never know who is really in need of your feedback, who's really in need of your word, what you're trying to share with people. You never know. And if, and if you're being negative and, you know, just disheartening, you can make it worse on somebody else. So if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything at all. But if you want to really offer some meaningful substance for somebody, go ahead and do so. Um, you can also send me an email if you're interested in me sharing a testimony for you. Or if you just want to share a testimony with me or, share, or just talk to me about this conversation, just you and I, one-on-one, -on -one, that's completely fine as well. But y'all let me know either way, how you're feeling, what you think, what your thoughts are, if you'd like to add to it, share your testimonies, whatever. We will keep the conversation going and talk next time. Bye.